Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it's time for the Q&A. So I'm going to do what I did last week when I didn't have internet, and so I couldn't really get to the questions on my computer, and I took snapshots of them on my phone, uh, and plugged them over into my computer. Uh, a lot of people like that, that they could see the question up on the screen, rather than me doing the timestamps that I've always historically done. And so since a lot of people like that, let's go ahead and do that again, and see if everyone likes it. So first question. Jason, my overhead press really lacks compared to my other upper body lifts. My flat bench is 110 times 5, that's kilos. Incline bench is 95 times 5. Weighted chins, 40 kilograms times 5, that's 78 kilogram body weight. However, my overhead press is only 60 kilograms times 5. How can I improve on the press whilst maintaining improving other upper body lifts currently running the cutting version of your novice program thank you brother all right uh let's look at that for a second because it looks like your incline is what about 12 percent lower than your flat bench uh, maybe there's a mild delt weakness there maybe a mild delt weakness because yeah your, your other lifts are decently strong especially your body weight i think a uh, 110 kilogram that's about for those unfamiliar that's about 242 pounds uh, for five reps, he's inclining almost 200 for five. Yeah, when you're 78 kilos, which puts him down in about in the 170s, I think that's pretty good. And you got a nice strong weight to chin up too. So yeah, your overhead press is definitely your weak link out of these upper body lifts because you're you're pretty strong on the other stuff for your body weight. You're not doing bad at all. Uh, and when I say a little low. Look at that, 110 versus 60 kilos. I usually tell guys you want to be somewhere around 65%, maybe up as high as 70%, right? And he's less than 60%. So what you need to do is just put a heavier focus on your overhead press. You need to add an extra overhead press day every week. And you might even want to alternate out some of your other chest pressing, uh, meaning maybe have some days where you would have gone in and flat bench or you would incline bench that week maybe once a week sub out some of those for more overhead pressing because at the end of the day the only way you're going to get stronger at any lift is to do more of it it really is that simple it is that simple and sometimes that means you're going to have to replace something else with it but here's the upside as long as you're continuing to do the flat bench and you're continuing to do the incline bench even if you're reducing the volume on them, if you get stronger on your overhead press, you're still building your upper chest, your delts, your triceps, that's still going to carry over to your other presses, meaning they can take a little bit of a back seat and you can put more focus on the overhead press and they will still probably get a little bit stronger with it uh, because there is some carryover there. So I wouldn't worry about that a lot. All right, next question. Hey Jason, I'm a tall lifter, 6'4", 193 cm, 102 kilograms, which puts him up about 225 so around my body weight, but uh, what, 7 inches taller than me? Uh, and I have always struggled with getting my squat up. Is this normal for a tall person? Is it because of leverages or just my shitty programming? I'm a former discus thrower and I can only front squat 140 kilos and high bar back squat 170 kilos and for singles in spite of having quite some years of experience fully raw just lifting shoes and chalk uh, i have benched in comp 160 kg i can overhead press 100 kilos uh, chin 40 kilograms for reps weight to dip 80 kilograms for double and power clean and jerk 135 kilograms and deadlift 230. Uh, I have always squatted multiple times a week. I've run a modified 531 with a squat push and a pull every workout. Currently on 200 milligrams of test and 100 milligrams of primo, and I always eat in a slight surplus and do cardio and GPP on the off days. Any help would be much appreciated. Thank you for everything you are doing, coach. Yeah, looking at these numbers, man, you, you pretty much power clean 300 pounds, right? You power clean 300, you deadlift over 500. Uh, but you can only front squat. Your front squat is barely <laughs> higher than your clean and jerk. Whoa. And then that deadlift being so much higher, uh, you just don't have enough quad muscle. Uh, your posterior chain, your hamstrings, your back are strong enough for you to squat a lot more. 
All right, Let, let's be realistic here. And I'm looking in that at that gap between your front squat and your back squat are both low and they're fairly close together. Uh, honestly, there should be more than 30 kilograms difference there also on that. So yeah, in this case, you just need a lot more quad work. Uh, you need to put more focus on squatting. You need to let some of this other stuff take a back seat for just a little bit if you want to balance out. I mean, particularly when you're bench, you're benching more than you front squat also. You bench almost as much as you pack squat. Uh, yeah, time for you to just go on a squat specific program for a while. Uh, you're going to need to do a lot of volume of, of squatting, back squatting and front squatting. Uh, in your case, because you're very posterior chain dominant, I don't see a problem with you doing some extra front squatting. I'm doing that myself right now. Uh, I mean, I'm going through the same thing. My numbers are higher than yours uh, as far as that goes, but I'm going through the same thing. Uh, I'm very posterior chain dominant from all the deadlifting and, and all of the rows and chin-ups and stuff I did uh, when I quit squatting for over a year. And so my quads are my weak link in all my squatting also. So I'm again, I'm going through the same thing, brother. You're going to have to come in and just prioritize squatting. You're going to need to do some sort of squat at the start of every workout. Uh, find a program that you like, something that will accommodate you, but it needs to be squat focused. In other words, every time you walk in the gym, you need to be doing a back squat or a front squat. So any good intermediate to advanced program will work for you there. You're, you're basically an advanced lifter. Find a good advanced program or a modified one. Even if you want to mess with some 531, you can do a modified 531 uh, with a little more volume, but you need to have a heavy squat focus. All right, next question. What's the best way to retain my 515 squat and 600 deadlift with only 300 pounds of weight at home? I've never done front squats and I'm guessing deficit deaths would help. All right, brother, you're an advanced lifter. You know better. You know with those numbers that there's no way you're going to maintain them. There is no way you're going to maintain them. But yeah, you kind of have the right of it. If all you have is 300 pounds, you're going to have to find harder variations of your lifts to do. Uh, deficit deadlifts, as much volume as you can handle every week. Paused front squats, as much volume as you can handle every week. Now people would say, why? Why do they need to be paused? Why do you need to do it this way? Uh, because you don't have anywhere near enough weight and so you actually have to recruit the most muscle mass with 300 pounds that you have available and be able to handle the most training volume and still recover from it. Uh, but Here's what you need to remember. Your lifts are going to go down. There is no way you're going to maintain those lifts with what you have available. Uh, make the best of it, though. You can retain a lot of it, and it's going to take you a little bit of time to regain it, depending on how long you have to train like this. But definitely do those things. Uh, do a lot of power cleans. Get your power clean up to 300 for reps if you're not there already. That'll also help with uh, maintaining it. But remember, you're going to lose some of it. There's no way around it with what you have. All right, next question. How much training is too much on a recomp for a drug-free lifter? Is weight training for four hours along with some hit once a week with one hour list per day too much? Progression is on a weekly basis, thanks. Uh, there's no way to know this. Maximum recoverable volume is dynamic. It is dynamic. It's going to depend on how much sleep you're getting, how much stress you're under, what your work capacity is. Uh, weight training and volume isn't measured in hours. It's not measured in hours. It's measured in tonnage. It's measured in axial loading. It's measured in level of psychological arousal. You're just simply going to have to get in and figure out at what point you start to overreach. When you start to see signs of overreaching, and you're probably going to need to back down 10% from there on your volume. That, that's really the only tool you have available. Uh, again, you need to remember Maximum recoverable volume is dynamic. It changes based upon your life circumstances and including even how much work capacity you have personally built. Uh, again, your hormones, your diet, your sleep, your stress levels, they all affect how much you can recover from. It's not measured in hours. All right, next question.
Is the floor press a useless variation for individuals who are limb dominant? I'm 6'2 and have long arms with a small rib cage, and when I perform a floor press, it doesn't even reach a half rep of a normal bench press, more of a quarter rep. Will this give me a carryover if I get strong at the floor press? Uh, that seems extreme. I mean, in my case, I'm on the other extreme, and I have long arms, but have a big rib cage. I can touch my chest. So to me, envisioning it being a quarter rep, I can't see that. I'd almost want to see you measure this. Like your, your rib cage would have to be absurdly small. Uh, and it also means you don't have ma much back development either. So I'm going to say, yeah, in this case, the floor press isn't going to be ideal for you. Uh, if you have a bench available, do a bench. If you have weighted dips available, do weighted dips. Uh, the floor press in this case is going to be such a short range of motion. Like if, it, if it's anything less than a half of a bench press rep for you, uh, it isn't going to carry over. It's probably not going to build as much muscle as you want, and it's not going to carry over to your other pressing strength. Uh, contrary to what a lot of people believe, heavy overloading at the top absolutely does not improve <laughs> benching strength at all unless you wear a bench press shirt. So yeah, in your case, this exercise isn't a good fit. I like the floor press. I think it's a great exercise. It isn't a great exercise for every person's personal individual anatomy at this time. And in your case, it sounds like it's just not a good fit for you. I wouldn't recommend it. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time in part two.